Now that we've talked through the template setup process, let's run through the workflow together. Let's start by filling out a form in the incoming request list. So in the incoming request list, I'm gonna to jump to our form here. And I've actually got a form that I've pre-filled with some of the details. So here I've gone ahead and added a requester. We've got a title for our project here, which is boost your content with chat GBT. We've gone ahead and updated the primary goal of this project, which is to rank higher in search. We've added a description of the project and requests. So this is going to be a blog post about prompts to use with chat GBT to boost marketing content. Our audience is going to be content marketers and our target channel is going to be a blog. And now remember, because I'm incorporating the target channel as a blog here, this task, when it's generated, it's going to use that template that we set up previously. Next, we've got mockups and inspiration that I can add here if I'd like, and finally, a due date. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this form. And once that form is submitted, it's going to land in our incoming request list here. So here you can see that same form submission has now generated a task. We've got our task title here. We've got our requester and our other custom fields. And now as the content manager, it's really my job to review all of our incoming requests and either prioritize, check the custom fields, maybe communicate with the person that made the submission so that I can ensure that all the details have been captured. And so to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slowly go through each custom field, check to see that everything was entered. You'll see that we've got our due date here. Comments will show up here as well. We've got our primary marketing goal, target audience, the channel. Now you'll notice that the marketing task type, this was not part of that initial form submission. This is actually something that I'm going to fill as the content manager. And remember, we're using this field as our way of helping us to organize our work and to send this task specifically to the team that needs to work on it. So by updating this task information, and I'll do that in just a moment, it's actually going to send that task to the appropriate list so that the team that works on those specific projects will have access to it. So looking here, I can see that there is a comment. Let's go ahead and click there. And it looks like Alicia had pointed out that this should be high priority. So I'm gonna go ahead and respond. And then let's go ahead, update that priority. And then the last two steps here are, I do feel like this is a task we can take on. It's high priority. It meets with our marketing goals. So let's go ahead, add an assignee. So I'm gonna add an assignee from that blog team. And then my last step here is going to be to update that marketing task type. So now that I've updated that marketing task type, this is gonna jump over to that blog list. And just as a reminder, as called out earlier, we had already incorporated this channel of blog. And so this task already has that blog task template applied. Now let's go ahead and jump to that blog list and manage some of the work. So I wanted to point out one more time, we've separated our lists based off of our content types. This makes it really easy for us to manage those specific pieces of content when we need to. Let's go ahead and jump to the blog list here. And in the blog list, the default view that you'll land on is going to be the list view. The list view is great because here we're capturing all of the details of those tasks and we can really track them across all of the different pieces of information that we need to. So it's really easy for me to see across all of the different tasks and all the information as it relates to those tasks. It's also really easy for me to make updates on the fly here. Finally, one of the most useful aspects of the list view is my ability to filter and sort. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and use the filters here and I'm just gonna look for things that are currently, let's go to due date and choose overdue. And I'm also going to say that the priority is urgent. By doing this, it's really easy for me to zoom directly into the tasks that I need to focus on at this time. We can see we've got a task here. It's currently in development. It's high priority. 
It's overdue by quite a bit. So let's go ahead and jump into this task and see what's going on. Here I can jump right into the task. I can comment to my teammates if I need to. So if I could write a comment directly to the person who's currently responsible for this. Or scrolling to the bottom here, you'll see that we've actually got we've actually got the draft for the blog already being worked on in a ClickUp doc. I can jump directly into this ClickUp doc. I can make comments on this doc if I need to. I can tag the person who's responsible. This way, I can actually make updates to my projects. I can work on my projects without having to context switch or move to different apps. Everything is taking place in a single platform. So let's say I've made some updates here and I'm ready to zoom back out. And then let's jump to board view as a way to look at things from a different perspective. Jumping over to board view, you can see board view is, it's like list view in that you still capture all the details of the tasks as needed. However, board view is much more visual. A couple of benefits to board view, I'm sure you've already noticed, but it's very visual. For any task that you have in ClickUp, if that task has an image associated with it, that image will show up. Also, you'll notice at the top here, we've got our process. So it's much easier for me to move things through that process as needed. So for example, this marketing task, it's currently in review after I've added those comments. Maybe we've also got an automation set up that when it moves to review, that sends a notification to our teammates. Hey, I've added some comments. It's time for you to make some updates. The last view I wanted to focus on for today is the calendar view. So let's go ahead and jump to a calendar view in the blog list first. So just remember, we're still in this blog list. Looking at the calendar view here, I can go ahead and jump to show. From here, I can choose if I want to show by start dates and due dates, if I want to look at my tasks that way. Although this is a little messy, so typically I would turn this off. I'd probably want to use a date custom field here instead. You can see that I've got the publish date turned on. This way I can see all of the blogs based off of when they're being published. So I have a publishing calendar for my blogs. But maybe I really need to see the publishing calendar across all of my content, not just the blog content. So let's take a look at how to do that. Because of ClickUp's hierarchy, I can go to a higher level, like this folder level. And from here, I can jump to the calendar view. And now I'm looking at all of my tasks across all of the different content types. I can go to show here. I could show my start and due dates if I wanted to, although this is pretty messy. So let's keep that turned off. Let's utilize that publish date as our custom date field. This way we're looking at all of our content and when that content plans to be published. And then one additional step here is that we can actually color our tasks. So we can choose how we want to color our tasks. Currently, we're coloring them by the list they're on. So this is really great because it's going to allow me to see exactly which content type is being published on which date. And you'll notice that the colors of my tasks here, like this green task, it's associated with this email list, which is also green. And that's similarly for all of the colors here. It's really easy for me to get visual cues on exactly which type of content is being published at which time. In this webinar, we covered a lot of information. We talked about the benefits of ClickUp for content management. We reviewed the template and the template setup process. And finally, we went through an example workflow together using forms for intake, tracking content projects using our custom fields, and the process of creating and managing an editorial calendar. Thanks so much for joining. We're really excited for you to continue to be successful on the platform. Also, just one more reminder, if you did want to take a more detailed course on what we've gone through today, there's an on-demand video course, and there's also a ClickUp University hands-on course that will actually walk you through all of the steps it will take to start using the template today. So thanks again for joining. Really appreciate your time and looking forward to seeing you again.